Hello. Uh, I'm Ofra Bargil. I'm from Vedicus Foundation. It's an NGO that its aim is to promote health through traditional health system. And my side is especially Ayurveda, since I believe that Ayurveda is the base for everything. Nowadays, we know that we call it Indian medicine, but I think it's the human being medicine. It's above all. So part of the things that we are doing in Vedicus is promoting things that we understand that they are pure and it's like the same that we share the same values from the same perspective about how life should be for humanity and we do also welfare camps and we come to whatever parish that call us and we teach how to maintain it at home because the main I think that the key is to maintain it at home and then only after things are getting out of hand, then you go to a Vedya. And it's Ayurveda, it's a Vedya. Doctor is a perspective that comes from the Western and it's very narrowed compared to what Vedya needs to know, understand and do. And I'm very, very happy to have here today Dr. Vedya Harish Warrior from Kerala. Actually, we share the same teacher, Dr. Vedya Srijit Sergi, and he said, oh, you must talk with Harish, and we had some complicated time to contact with each other, but then I understood why he said you must talk to Harish, and I hope that today you will understand why I had to talk to Harish and will follow, because Harish has many things to offer, and one of the top-notch things that you have to offer is talk about the gut, gut. It's not just a feeling, it's not just a place, it's something to handle. And so the floor is yours, Harish Warrior from Kerala. Hi, hi Afra. Thank you so much for that um, sweet introduction. Um, so um, thank you all for um, coming down here. In words of gratitude for uh, being here. And uh, um, thank you uh, to Afra and Vedika's foundation for um, helping me um, speak in front of this August audience on gut health. So um, just as she mentioned that she was in touch with my Guru Nath, uh, Dr. Srijit, and uh, when uh, Srijit sir uh, reached out to me and said that, uh, you know, there is uh, somebody who would contact you, please, uh, uh, please do get in, uh, you know, please, please do speak to them. I knew that uh, whenever he says please speak to them there would be something really really deep about it and when i connected to ofra i could really feel that uh, you know that deep philosophical connect that we had and thank you so much uh, ofra for reaching out and um, helping us being here thank you so much words of gratitude so <clears throat> hello everyone and uh, thank you so much uh, for being here i would like to start off by um, by asking you all to please turn on your cameras you know i me and ofra are like uh, I, I feel like i'm uh, talking to a blank screen if it would be great if we can you know see each other that would uh, thank you so much sarita for um you know being with us thank you come on guys everybody if you can turn on your cameras you know we'll be able to see each other as well thank you dr kalpana Nice to meet you here. Thank you, Maya. Nice to see you here. <clears throat> Who else? Who else? Come on. All right. All right. I hope as the session progresses, uh, we would. So I'll remind you guys from time to time to turn on your cameras. Okay. So, um, so how are you guys doing? That's the first thing that I would like to know. How are you guys doing today? How are you doing? Let me know in the chat box. How are you doing? Would love to know that. And this is going to be an interactive session, okay? It's not going to be a lecture, right? I'm sure that we have had enough in our lives. Go ahead, let me know in the chat box how are you guys doing. You should be able to um, let me know in the chat box how are you doing. All right. In the chat box, please. All right. I hope as the session progresses. Okay, very fine. Thank you, Vedikas. Thank you so much for letting us know. All right, great. Now, let okay. Fine. Oh, wow. Fine, healthy and wealthy. Wow. That's an amazing space to be. Good. Great. Abundant. Everything is good. Superb. Great. Good, good, good. So, um, I would like to know where are you guys from? 
right? Where where are you people from? So that um, you know, I'll tell you all about me during the session. But I would like to know where are you from, since we would be connecting for the next one hour. And uh, okay, Praveen uh, is from Mumbai. Sarita is from Pune. All right, great, wonderful. Thank you so much for letting us know where you're from. Anybody else who would like to let us know? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Kalpana is from Bangalore. Wonderful. Thank you so much for letting us know. Great, great, great. So, let me just bring the presentation on. So, a little bit about me. I'm not going to brag a lot today, right? But uh, a little bit about me, who I am. Uh, I am, and uh, you know, if you want, you can read that. But I would like to um, put it out. I'm Dr. Harish Varya. I come from a small little town called Trishur in Kerala. Has anybody heard of Trishur? Right? Anybody heard of Trishur? So I'm, I come from a small town called Trishur in Kerala, and uh, I was born into a family of uh, three generations of um, Ayurvedic physicians. Uh, so as luck would have it, I also kind of went into that, but um, um, it it did not stop me from being very very sick in my life. I'll tell you more about that, right? So it was actually not only learning but applying what I learned is actually what got me out. from uh, the space that i was in and um like um what you see there is a small piece of it but there has been so much deeper which i would like to uh, really help you with uh, in the session today now uh, we run workshops uh, we run retreats and we work on preventive medicine we believe that the gut is the root of almost all problems that we have and we run a workshop which is called the gut reset workshop and uh, it has helped over 21000 people fix their gut and come out of their health issues from uh, in the last uh, one and a half years and uh, our mission is to transform 1 billion people lead a healthy and a happy life right so now this session is all going to be why gut health is the only thing that you ever need to focus on why your digestive health gut digestion right why the digestive health is so important and that's the only thing that you need to focus on so um can anybody identify who this is any any guesses wild guesses okay so uh, i'll say that right that's that's me a few years ago right yeah that's me a few years ago and uh, okay so this is some this is a um photo that's very very close to my heart and this is so close to my heart i can't tell you right so <clears throat> i was at uttarkashi i am a shivananda school of yoga pass out and i was at uttarkashi um, in the year 2019 and you can see me at the right corner can you see that at the right hand corner that's me and uh, uh, we have these um uh, you know great ladies and um, men there who are who all Uh, have come in for a very very special session so can you tell me something uh, can can you let me know what are your feelings about what you see on the screen what sort of session are we having anybody no we were we were being taught something very very specific that day can you can you guess what that was what the session was on anybody type it out in the chat box garbha samskar um uh okay yeah so it was no no not central obesity it was it was on pregnancy yoga okay it was on pregnancy yoga and how we can help pregnant ladies um you know do yoga as well now <clears throat> exactly right so now there is something very different about the others and me right any guesses any wild guesses what is different about others and me there the thing is each and every one of the other person there has a pillow in their tummy and i didn't need one what you see there is the original one okay so that's that's original <clears throat> right so i didn't need one at that point right i was and i was probably one of the um uh, you know the the odd one out the the the, the black sheep in the white herd right and i would really stand out right for all the wrong reasons during the yoga sessions that we would have and the teacher so one of the instructor would have to be near me to make sure that i don't mess up 
right that's how bad things were and i thought that um i was the only one right now in the third round of surya namaskar that i was doing probably uh, for the first time in 10 years right when my um when my things went wrong i was diabetic at that point i was i was having bp there were a lot of things that i was going through so on the third round of uh, surya namaskar when i bent forward something really really nasty happened right when i bent forward you know what can happen right and i farted and it was so loud that i can't tell you how embarrassed i was okay and you know as this as this would go i could hear more of it it was not only me there were other people also the people that i thought were really really fit and really really healthy they had similar concerns as well right how many of you here are able to feel it that your gut is something that's not um you know not 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 the way you want it me in the chat box if you feel that's you right not only this right many other things that can happen and it was not only me right type me in the chat box if you could feel this that your gut is not where you want it to be your digestive system is not where you really want it to be okay so i think i'll have to um really wake you up all right i am getting a few mees here wonderful thank you right I'm not happy with it. great okay that's a great space to be in uh, sarita right knowledge or knowing that something is not right is a great space to be in wonderful right so <clears throat> it was not only me there were a lot of other people as well and um there was somebody who was next to me okay i'm forgetting her name she was a russian right and uh, she uh, has been traveling in india for a long time and she would do amazing poses right part of the time that we were uh, we would spend is you know looking at her and uh, you know just imagining when we are going to do that right that is how it used to be that's how the session used to be some of us would come in when the teacher is out we would just sit and watch her do the poses i right? we were like awe struck right these are some of the poses that she would do during the session and would really make us jealous okay now all this all this now the point was she came to me and she said every day and she's fit and she does amazing amazing process right and she said she needs a puff or a really really strong tea to poop right and it's just not that the physical fitness that you see outside is what uh, really determines of how healthy you are that's the um insight that i got that particular day now i want you all to do a test now are you all ready for a test yes in the chat box if you are ready for a test to exactly know what is going on inside you and what is the amount of healthy bacteria that you have in your gut okay so just let me check just give me a moment okay all of you are ready just let me bring it on mhm i'm just going to send that link here okay i want you all to spend the next uh, you know couple of minutes doing all it's going to take is a couple of minutes and i want you to share the result that you get right what what you get there <clears throat> i want you to share it here there it is in the chat box there is a link in the chat box please click on that and let me know what is the score that you got in the meantime i would also like to ask everybody here to turn on your cameras if possible you know i would love to meet you all done in the chat box once you're done and please do post the result that you get as well are you doing that as well after yeah yeah i just finished but my scores are not so good <laughs> no no i'm kidding I mean, it's too good so oh it's too good <laughs> to, 10 out of 12 so <laughs> that's good yeah it's good now but it it's good now but when i had crohn's it wasn't good but yeah you got uh, him kumari got 6 out of 12 Okay. Yeah. Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, another six out of twelve. Okay, mm-hmm. you have good company here. Great. 
<laughs> five so out of today. We have people that will get a lot of benefit from this talk. Wonderful. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. And you know, keep it coming. As um, save this link if you wish to. Right. Go ahead, save this link, and uh, uh, you know you can you can probably help people as well to understand what is the state of their gut bacteria. Right. Share it. Right. Um, that's something that my teacher, Dr. Srijit, has always taught. No, it should be fun. Learning should be fun, and it should be with a firm understanding of where you stand right now. Right, you knowing where you stand is very very important. Same thing with health. You should know where you stand right now. Okay, that's going to be the uh, base of um, you going forward. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. So, <clears throat> so this was the gut bacteria test, and uh, this will help you realize what is the state or rather what is the state of the gut bacteria i'll go more into the to this little so there are a few rules to the gut okay there are a few rules to the gut the gut or the digestive system is something that demands respect okay it's very very strict just like we humans right we humans demand respect don't we right we don't like um people are shushing us around you know ye karo wo karo they don't like it do they right so similarly that's the same thing with the gut it doesn't like being disrespected at any point the second thing is it has got integrity right so it is very honest it will give you honest feedback very very honest feedback okay and it is accountable as well right it will keep you accountable if you want one thing to help you with uh, doing anything in life which will always give you a very very um you know the right signals for you that is going to be the gut right it will make sure that you are keeping yourself accountable a small deviation multiplied over a large period of time can really 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 take you in a very very different direction so you have to be respectful you should show a lot of integrity and also you should be accountable for the gut these are the rules of the gut basic right and to help you better understand the importance of this part of your body the gut is the only free passage into your body now what do i mean by that now type me in the chat box if you believe that the gut is the only open system only completely open system in your body the only open completely open channel into your body type me in the chat box yes if anybody has thoughts of uh saying that you know the lungs is also open channel try putting some pav bhaji into it right or vada pav or or a pizza right so then you would really realize that the gut the the digestive system is the only thing that's completely open and available for us to put in anything that we want right so <clears throat> it's the only open passage into your body and that is why it demands so much respect okay now this is one concept that i want all of you to etch i'm not saying right etch you have to really etch right into your uh brain cells i would read it in uh, sanskrit first it is called roga sarve api manda agno roga sarve api mande agno now what does it mean anybody here who's an ayurveda doctor i'm sure that i will find one yeah skin yeah yes but then inside into your body skin is more external right right we tend to take our gut for granted yes i'm sure that i'll find a few are with the doctors or um you know believers here all right so this is a concept that has been hailed in ayurveda and tell me one thing which is more important is it nutrition or digestion you are what you eat or are you what you digest you are what you eat or are you what you digest digest there are 20 24 people here other than me and uh, offer i would like i would love to you know really hear about you are what you eat okay great thank you for that if anybody has got uh, any thought of putting both please don't this is not the indian election system where you have a nota okay 
so okay so now yeah digest assimilate wonderful great space great great thought process wonderful right super now um let's say that you both eat and digest hey bhagwan uh, so now <clears throat> you know you have to stand with one either eat or digest which one is it going to be right vibha so the point uh, what i'm coming to is let's say that you have a great plate of meal in front of you right it's something that um any would anybody would say yaar this is the best uh, balanced meal that you can ever have you know that kind of a meal in front of you uh you're going to eat it but some of it doesn't suit your body type right some portion of it doesn't suit your body type is it going to be of any use eating that yes or no in the chat box right you're going to eat something which doesn't suit you right why it doesn't suit you i'll tell you okay so i'll come to that no it's not going to be of any use right thank you for confirming sarita maya great thank you so now uh if it doesn't suit you there's no point taking it so now who was that um mm, 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 mm. bhagya now let me know what do you think are we what we eat or are we what we digest right we we are a, we are one family here right of like minded people you know you can go ahead and if you have a change in opinion please do let us know right even otherwise please do let us know both are reasonable superb right superb both are reasonable i do agree right but the um thing is when you eat something which doesn't suit you and it doesn't digest and it doesn't assimilate it's of absolutely no use so understanding what you can digest and eating accordingly both are reasonable yes in that context wherein you are eating something that you can digest then it makes sense but just what you eat might not make sense completely that is the reason why today we have so many so many digestive concerns because our focus is on what we eat right and not on something that we can digest assimilate and use it for our body this is where this is where the whole concept of roga sarve api mandagno that is the any disease process that happens in your body right i'm not talking about fractures okay it has no connection with the gut right it has got everything to do with what we do right so um any disease process manifesting in your body is because of a reduced digestive fire due to many reasons right the reasons can be many but base of all this is a reduced digestive fire right you are right correct correct you are very right bhagya rightly put okay <clears throat> now what is agni now this is a uh, portion from a research paper that you know i pulled out if anybody is interested in uh, references um so now if you look at agni what is agni no i said roga sarve api mandagno or a reduced agni or a reduced digestive fire is the reason for most so the conclusion that this research paper i have put the um you know the reference to that the direct link to that as well you can uh, copy that if you wish and you can uh, you'll get the direct pdf to this so in this research it said that um agni apart from the digestive system is also responsible for the production of strength right now what does strength mean strength to resist the occurrence of disease and decay in the human body if your digestive system is good your aging process will be slower right two strength to perform physical exercises or any physical activity for that reason due to faulty agni status a number of unripe undigested unmetabolized byproducts are formed and have a tendency to block the micro channels of the body thus resulting in accumulation of morbid matters and finally precipitate in the form of disease so this is the root from where most of the diseases come and uh, i see a few uh, doctors here hope um uh, like you're all like medical doctors and one thing that my teacher hardwired into us about diabetes was diabetes is nothing but delayed digestion right and just by working on that one part of diabetes has had a tremendous effect on many of the people that have uh, worked with us including me right i would say i was diabetic my dad is diabetic my grandfather was diabetic but i was 
and I'm no longer why because I focused on this one part. That's it, right? Now, what happens? Uh, food intake that is common for all of us. We all do eat, right? Um, and food intake, if it goes into a body that has got good digestion, it leads to good tissues, right? And proper function. Each and every function in your body happens well. If you have a poor digestion, there'll be poor formation of tissues and accumulation of waste and diseases stem out of a poor digestion. Now, if you're able to correct your fire, you would be able to heal anything. Right? When I mean anything, I mean anything. We can very well argue what about fractures and stuff. You know, If the um, digestion and assimilation is not fine, if you have a fracture, it will not heal. So if you want anything to heal in your body, your fire has to support you. Your digestive fire has to support you. How to do it? I'm coming to it. Okay. Now, anybody interested in this? How to eat anything and stay healthy? That's an amazing offer, I'll tell you. Right? I'm, I'm not sure how many of how many doctors would tell you this, but this is an amazing offer. How to eat anything and stay healthy? Right? Anybody interested in knowing this? How to eat anything and stay healthy? Type me, guys, if you're really that. Yeah, I am. Okay, great. Almost all will be interested. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Praveen, is it like you would bless me if I tell you this? <laughs> all right. Me. Great. Okay. All right. So now, um, we all do eat food, don't we? Right? We all do eat food. And uh, do we have a particular uh, reason why we eat food? Or is it like, um, you know, uh, what makes you eat food? That's my question. What makes you eat food? Is in Okay, I'll make it more clear. You sitting down and having food, what are the factors that you consider? Is it the hunger that you have? Or is it, Are, ek gaye, chalo khana khate. You know, is it that? You know, it's one o'clock, let me have my lunch. Is what motivates you to eat food? It's hunger. Hunger. Does anybody say, I'm bored, let me eat food. Because in the workshop that I run, I do get a lot of this. Right? I, I do get, you know, diverse things. Don't even want to know. Right? So, uh, I would say that if I have a fight, I'll eat. Right? If I um, you know, don't have anything else to do, I'll eat. If I'm watching something, I'll eat. Hunger. Great. Good. Now, how about having a checklist? How about having checklist to check whether it is the right time to heal type yes in the chat box if you want a checklist to check whether it is the right time to heal i know that i might sound like a primary school teacher love to interact because you know i i really feel the need to connect with you right awesome thank you me in the chat box if you want a checklist that you can check the next time when you are me in the chat box all right. Thank you. Thank you, Ankita. Thank you for that. Great. Right. Sometimes cause a busy schedule like eat. Just finish that. Okay. Great. Good. Great. Thank you. Feeling of hunger. Control. Great. Now, this is not a checklist that came out last week. Okay. This is a checklist that came out 4,000 years ago. Right. And if anybody has to validate it, that who wrote it and all that, I have absolutely no idea. But the only thing that I know that it works. Okay. <clears throat> now, it comes from a book, right? Um, it comes from a very, very ancient book called Ashtanga Radeya. And uh, it goes like this in Sanskrit. Udgar shuddhi rutsa ho vega utsarga yadho chita lakhuta kshut pipa sacha jirna ahara se lakshana. I hope everybody understood. You know, I'll go into it right don't worry you go into it now this is a checklist so when you decide to have your food there should be no taste or smell in your burp right in your burp when you burp there should be no taste or smell of the previously ingested food right if you don't burp it should not be there in your mouth that 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 
taste or smell of the previously eaten food shouldn't be there in your burp or in your mouth that you should feel anybody here who feels that that when you burp there is taste or smell of the previously eaten food yes in the chat box you are still hungry you are hungry but still the burp taste or smell of the previously ingested food come on guys let me know if you feel that sometimes thank you thank you for that sarita great now next is an energetic feel okay you have checked whether your burp is clear your mouth feels like um you know the what the sandwich that you ate is still there it depends on the food yeah i do i do agree yes it depends on the food so does it exist or not that's the only question okay does is it there or not right it does depend on food because you don't digest everything the same way right so some might take more time you had a good uh you know a breakfast in the morning and then you might not feel hungry by till 2 o'clock depends on what you eat right absolutely does so now next is an energetic feel you feeling energetic is a direct indication that you have a good digestion okay you feeling energetic is a direct indication that you have a good digestion check whether you have energetic feel or you are like oh, i think it's time to eat is it that that you feel or is it like yeah i think it's time to eat so you really need to um check these right which one are you really feeling inside right it's a feeling feeling thing it's you thing okay so you need to, you really need to check that third is when you're sitting down to eat your food make sure that you don't have the urge to poop and pee right so if you have that if you feel like pooping or peeing finish that and then come have your food why because if that still that feeling still exists your digestion will not happen properly right it will not be complete okay that's very important now the next is lightness in body and mind the importance of prayer right in food or importance of having that mind which is connected with the energy in the food anybody here who has seen the movie called the life of pi me in the chat box you seen the movie called the life of pi don't worry i'm not going to give you the full story here but i've got a very very um important piece there the life of pi please do let me know in the chat box if you have seen the life of pi me in the chat box if you have seen the life of pi anybody so we're telling you and me you, we can give them oh, okay we have one more manisha okay yeah. manisha thank you thank you so in that movie if you do remember i'm sure that many of you would have seen i'll just give you a backdrop a boy uh you know um his ship wrecks right he was traveling in a ship with a lot of animals with his parents and the ship wrecks okay there's a shipwreck and uh he survives uh on a lifeboat okay he survives on a lifeboat and uh, what happens is he stuck with a tiger okay he stuck with a tiger and there is food in the lifeboat but after a few days the food exhaust gets exhausted right so there is no food for the tiger there is no food for the boy it's a very dangerous space to be in you know the tiger has nothing else to eat he's sure that it is going to eat him right if it gets a chance now the boy is a vegetarian okay he is a vegetarian he has never had anything in his life any non veg in his life he has never had anything that involved a little bit of himsa or violence he has never done that very pious boy now what happens is he is stuck in the middle of an ocean with a tiger and he doesn't have anything to eat right so what happens is what happens in that instant is that he gets a fish right he is so hungry that he is sure that he is going to pass out in a few hours and he is going to die if he doesn't eat right so he gets a fish now the fish is alive in his hands right the fish is alive in his hands and um just before he is going to you know really poke the fish with something i don't remember what uh he is going to poke the fish he says thank you lord vishnu for coming in the form of this fish right he thanks the lord for coming in the form of this fish it's not that he says thank you for giving me the food right he sees god in the food that he is eating 
there's a lot of difference between that what you eat how many of you here have looked at a vada pav or a you know really creamy burger and said oh my god i'm really going to put on if i have this now and then you still end up eating it right so you know the energy that you give is what you get same applies here also okay uh, please type yes in the chat box if you will that's true right so it's it's really that energy that you give out that you receive right yes in the chat box if you believe that so what energy you give your food is what you receive back right so it is very very important that we have an element of gratitude to the energy in the food that is why in um <clears throat> homes right many homes uh, it happens on uh, certain days in our house also when our daughter is on the table wherein she would uh, you know instinctively i would nudge her and she would start ब्रह्मापणम ब्रह्म हविर्ब्रह्मो ब्रह्मणाहुदम ब्रह्मेव तेन गंतव्यम ब्रह्मकर्म सधि सो दिस इज अ वर्स फ्रॉम द भगवदगीता विच टेल्स यू द इंपॉर्टन्स ऑफ सीइंग गॉड एवरीवेर इट्स जस्ट नॉट इन द फूड द पर्सन हू प्रिपेर्स द फूड द घी दट गोज इन टू द फूड द वे द फूड इज प्रिपेर द रॉ मेटीरियल एवरीथिंग इज गॉड एंड यू आर गेटिंग अ पोर्शन ऑफ दैट इन टू यू right you're accepting that energy into you you're taking that energy into you so it's very important for us to have a prayer before we have our food or put that beautiful energy wherein you and your food are one and now the last thing that you need to check for is your hunger that is when you go ahead and check are am i really hungry or not right so the last thing to look for is hunger now remember it's more about you right it's more about you what i mean by that um whatever you feel is what you should go with always right whatever you feel is what you should go with for example uh if anybody wants to know whether uh, the food that you're eating is good for you or not there are two feelings that you would have one feeling when you eat it right when you're just eating it mm pani puri it tastes you know it tastes really good in the mouth gulab jamun really tastes good in the mouth now once it goes in right about 20 minutes later there is another feeling that you have right hear that also right if it's still good no problem right so it's more about you how you feel on a particular thing it is not a social norm that you should follow this is nutritious oh i should take this now if you feed um you know the rajma to uh, my uh, wife here lakshmi no she says that she poops it out as it is right it doesn't suit her right there's a reason for that it doesn't suit her right and there are things that i don't eat because i know that i might not be able to digest that complete it doesn't go well with me okay it's not an allergy allergy but i don't i just don't feel good right so you really need to gauge that as well it's more about you okay you and your friend might be on the same vegan diet right and you know are chalo there is a trendy diet in town let's try it and you know your friend might feel wow this is amazing this is what i've been waiting for and you are like don't tell me what happened to me yesterday right so you might be on the same diet i'm not i'm not against veganism okay i'm a vegetarian by choice um now you might be on the same vegan diet but it might not go well with another person as you do same goes for proteins right they might i'm just giving you examples okay these are not um you know absolutes that i'm telling you i'm just giving you examples to understand that everybody is different so your your friend might relish being on animal protein and might eat it <clears throat> right left right and center but the moment you try this for more than a day you might you know end up being in the emergency room this happens right because each and every one of us has a diff- are all different and respect the responses of your gut else expect reactions right your gut is great at giving you responses right timely responses 
just like that just like the mother who wants the best for a child no whenever there is something that needs to be corrected they would correct it the right way similarly they're giving you responses else accept uh, expect reactions now this is a major major thing for many of us craving what is craving what is craving now i tell you when it really changed me the 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 you know the attitude that i had towards craving completely changed for me all love stories here or is it too too late for stories wherein you want to go and sleep after this okay now it's not going to be a long one so it's going to be a very short one <clears throat> so my um my cousin was getting married okay my cousin was getting married she was in the us and she came to india and you know we, we are quite close so her name is dhanya she doesn't have brothers right and uh, uh, like we are we are very close that way right she's of my same age and uh, we've had a great time in our childhood so we connect really well now um i was sitting with her and suddenly she is like uh this is after four or five days after coming from the us okay so she's not jet lagged by then so she uh says harish i really feel like eating a laddu right i was in college at that point okay i really feel like eating a laddu and i don't know instinctively i asked her dhanya did you sleep well yesterday i don't know why i asked her but i did did you sleep well yesterday and she said no how do you know are you checking on me no i said no i'm not i'm not checking on you anyway right so how did you know you said that you are craving for sweets very good chance that you haven't slept well yesterday now your cravings that you have is actually a way of understanding what is going on inside you as well the things that you really crave for i'm not saying that uh you craving for a really um you know good looking burger on a regular basis is something that you should trust but there are times when you might crave for certain tastes and that is actually a response of your gut telling you that there is something deficient inside you right it always does how many of you have got feedbacks from your gut how many of you have got feedbacks from your digestive system how many of you can really feel what i'm saying that there are times when it has really spoken to you right it has whispered how many of you felt that secrets or i want this really i'm like you know i can't hold it anymore please right you feel you do have that don't you we we go through that why because our gut is speaking to us right secrets maybe but it's speaking to us so it's very important that you he- hear them and do something about it right really do something about it now that's what cravings are so what i'm telling you here is that there is a communication that is going on right now if you if anybody here feels that i've gone a bit overboard feel free to let me know right but why antibiotics are the unnecessary evil because though it was a life saver it is still a life saver right <clears throat> and i believe in something uh, a, a philosophy that is called uh, ekam shastram adhiyano na vidyat shastra nishayam tasmat bahushrudam shastram vijaniya chikilsaka this is a quote that i have taken from a book called the susruta samhita and what it means is that a a scientist or a shastraknya or somebody who is propagating a particular science or a philosophy doesn't know the philosophy completely till they know the contemporary sciences as well right for me today if i look at it uh, that time in the ancient ages modern medicine was not there right it didn't exist right 4000 years ago and today if i look at it yes the modern medicine does exist it is something that is um, very very important to keep humanity alive many a times yes right and uh, homeopathy anything be it any chinese medicine whatever they are understanding them and respecting them is a big part of my philosophy but what i'm trying to tell you here is uh, antibiotics are being prescribed left right and center right for even something as inappropriate as viral infections which they have absolutely no role on 
right? They absolutely have no role in viral infections and still they are being prescribed left, right and center, right? Um, I got to, I got the pinch of it when my daughter, um, you know, fell ill at one point and the, she was pretty healthy. She came out of that um, and she was prescribed antibiotics very heavily for a few days for a certain reason. Uh, I'm not completely convinced even today, but then uh, we had to do that at that point. Now, the moment she came out, she was not able to digest things for a few days. It took us a lot of work to bring her out of that, right? And today, thankfully, touch wood, um, she has not taken antibiotics since. She was one, one and a half year old then. She's six years now. She never had to go through that. We've gone through different climatic changes, different locations across India, polluted cities. Here where we stay right now, which is um, not very polluted, but then we've gone through all that. But we're very happy that she is not on them. But if needed, we might want to at some point. We're not against it. But what I'm trying to say is, it is something <clears throat> that is really, really troubling a very important part of your gut, which is your gut bacteria. Right? Your gut bacteria are the ones that constantly keep communicating with your gut brain. Okay, You have a brain in your gut. Anybody has had gut feelings? Me in the chat box if you've had gut feelings. Anybody has fallen in love and felt those beautiful butterfly in your stomach? I have, right? More than once. Okay. So, <clears throat> anybody who has felt that? Okay. Great. Great. Superb. Right? Those are the things that you feel. And now, uh, the, uh, the, the gut bacteria communicate with your um, gut brain. Okay? The gut bacteria communicate with your gut brain. And when antibiotics go in they not only um, take care of the infection that is there but it also kind of destroys many a times our gut bacteria it takes it for a huge toss right they are necessary when used right right but unscrupulous practice is not right so if you feel at any point that it's overboard feel free to communicate with your care provider it's very important it's your right as a consumer it's your right right communicating that's very very important if you come to me and if you really feel that there is something that you feel i'm doing wrong feel free right to communicate that's very important to maintain that communication channel is very important we are humans at the end of the day right right we grow by communication we exist by communication right <clears throat> now anybody here who has noticed that there's a substantial increase in supplement use these days <coughs> Anybody who has noticed that? Substantial. I mean, uh, I think substantial would be an understatement. Right? That there's a substantial use. Now, why? Why is there a substantial use? Because we have been causing it with the unscrupulous use of antibiotics. There is a huge um, division of science or there's a huge... Um, um, there's a lot of attention going towards antibiotic resistance. Right? There's a lot of antibiotic resistance that is happening, which is leading to increased use of it. Right? So we have actually been causing this. Why? Because when we are born in a natural, um, through a natural vaginal delivery, that is one of the questions that you would have seen on the gut bacteria test. Right? So when you're born through a natural vaginal delivery, you get a lot of this, right? this um, this resistance, this, um, there are a lot of technical terms to it. I'm not going there. But when you're born that way, you get a lot of that as well. You get a lot of resistance naturally. Right? Now, <clears throat> there are a few vitamins and minerals. Sorry, there are a few vitamins that only the gut bacteria can produce. Only they can produce. And when we take antibiotics, or when we take anything that can destroy, it is not only antibiotics, okay? Right? I'm coming to that also. Right? Even if you're eating things that are healthy, it can spoil it. I'll tell you how. Right? But I'm just addressing the biggest elephant here. Okay? Now, when it goes, or when you really, really um, use antibiotics, especially um, for mothers, or also for newborn babies, or even after that, when you kill your gut bacteria, 
they will not be able to produce those vitamins that are very very important for you which is why you face the deficiency which is why you have to take it we have been causing it microbes are important for us right and i don't know how many of you know that we have a whooping 2 kilograms of them in your gut so if you are 8 70 kilos you are only 68 kilos <clears throat> 2 kilos they account for it right you have a lot of it and if you feel that there is something in this please to put in a lot of attention to this why because there might come a time when we might not be able to resist diseases right every civilization has met its end with the tools that it creates everything every civilization i really hope that we don't create medicines that end us Anybody has heard of this term, prakriti? <clears throat> yes, in the chat box if you have. Sorry for my throat. Anybody who has heard the term prakriti? Twenty-six people here, other than me and Ofra. So I'm assuming yes or no. At least no, if you have not. Okay. I mean, if you have, wonderful, great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. So we have a body type. right i'm sure that everybody knows that you have a body type and the interesting fact is that your body type has a particular set of gut bacteria right there are a lot of research papers that you can go and you know just google prakriti and gut bacteria you'll find lots of research papers on that right i'm not going into that science right i just want you to realize that there is a lot of connection between you your bacteria and your prakriti i'm i'm going to you know link those two that's what i'm doing right now okay <clears throat> yeah thank you so much vedikas thank you so much for letting me know that all right so now your connection is uh you no know, yeah the prakriti has got a particular set of gut bacteria when you work with your prakriti or when you um really understand what your prakriti is and have food according to that you are feeding the bacteria that will sustain you but when i'm not saying that once in a while going out of it is not um is really bad no once in a while is fine but if you constantly keep giving it things that the bacteria cannot handle according to your prakriti we will end up being not so healthy right so this is where the whole thing of what you can digest comes into picture your prakriti can digest a few things and your food should be in alignment with that okay <clears throat> now okay i do everything you know i follow my prakriti i um, you know eat healthy i i do workout everything i do everything but i still don't feel healthy anybody here who's feeling that that are maine sab kuch kiya hai बट फिर भी मुझे ठीक नहीं लगता एनी बडी इन दैट स्पेस आई हैव डन एवरीथिंग यू नेम इट आई हैव डन इट बट स्टिल आई एम नॉट फीलिंग दैट व्हाई? बिकॉज़ देयर इज अ बिग फैट पीस मिसिंग फ्रॉम द पसल एंड दैट इज योर माइंड दैट मिसिंग पजल पीस ऑफ द पसल इज योर माइंड राइट सो ट्रेनिंग योर माइंड अ लॉट ऑफ टेक्निक्स Right? there are n number of techniques but understanding that it is also involved is what i'm doing i'm just opening doors for you so that you can walk through it right i hope i've been able to do that so uh, you know i'm just opening doors so why the mind is so important you can have everything in your life my friends right but if your mind doesn't support you i'll, I'll give you a beautiful imagery um <clears throat> just imagine that you're walking into a temple in kerala through the small roads village roads and uh, there is a temple festival going on we have elephants that come for these festivals okay we have got beautiful elephants that are decorated and they come in for the festival now you know that elephant has a big trunk right and as the elephant walks through that road i'm sure that people are selling a lot of juicy things you know bananas um other fruits which this guy is very very interested in 
the elephant is very interested in so he's got a big trunk and nobody's going to say no to an elephant you know and the elephant might just snatch uh, about um, half a dozen bananas and put even before you know it it goes right into its mouth you can't stop it so what does the mahoot do the mahoot what he does is he gives the elephant a stick right the elephant has to hold the stick in its trunk so that it is not distracted by this and keeps walking without snatching anything from either sides that's the same thing with your mind you need to give it something that it can hold on to right you can call it meditation mindfulness it's your choice right but you need to give that stick to your mind because the moment your hand walks towards something that um you might not need at that point you should say i know come back you know you should be able to pull that back as well right so it's the missing puzzle in the whole thing and when your mind starts supporting you whatever you are doing here is to make sure that your mind supports you okay and when it does there is magic that can happen in your life now how do we improve the million dollar question right you have given us all the gyan now tell us what do we do about it you know what are the action steps that we would take okay so i would like you guys to start off with these right start off with these right away basics bare basics okay really bare basics eat raw and cooked food separately separate them right don't take salad with you know raw salad with food <clears throat> keep them separate don't take fruits with the other food that you take this is why the hotel buffets is actually making you spend more than what you would spend in cash there all right you're spending much more than that if you're regularly taking that if you're taking everything right avoid excess salt and chili they're extremes avoid them excess in in quantities that are moderate is good but not in excess have buttermilk it's elixir to your gut and buttermilk there's a special there's a way in which you need to prepare that where the entire uh, butter is removed ideally from a a2 source a2 source uh, for people who are from india here uh, a2 source is something that comes from indian breeds of cows right so that is a really good source because others are genetically modified if your country has an indigenous breed which has been there for a long long time most probably that is going to be a a2 source right and things that came in very recently be careful they just produce a white liquid and nothing more right i i have got all respects for those poor souls right they were generated that way they were created that way okay now meditate and exercise haha <laughs> very easy to say but yes it does help okay meditate and exercise it's it's necessary meditation can be in any way so if a somebody who draws that's meditation somebody who teaches that act can be meditation right it's your wish but do something that helps you find your purpose that deep down purpose that you have right for me i love this i love being with people right i really love this so this is is meditation for me i'm refreshed after this okay exercise do exercise regularly and have trifula trifula i'm sure everybody knows this and you know you don't need to have you know 10 grams 20 grams and expect that the next day you would poop really well that's not the target here okay the target is to heal your gut and when you take trifula you are actually healing your gut and you need just 1 gram not more 1 gram of trifula that is 3 pinches of trifula in half a glass of warm water at bed time that's it that is it that you need that's it whatever is happening by 2 teaspoons of it every day is a hyper function which is not normal function right so have only 2 grams sorry 1 gram of trifula to start off maximum is 3 grams not more all right at bed time with warm water <clears throat> for non vegetarians avoid stressed meat right so i'm not against non veg nor is ayurveda against non veg if i it's it's uh, it's not 
or rather it was a very wrong message that was sent out that ayurveda is against non veg no it's not right but if you are having non veg to satisfy let me bring myself on screen just give me a moment and this is mm -hmm. all right so if you are using non veg to satisfy this much of your digestive tract okay only to satisfy the tongue then that's something that you need to really think about right it's at the cost of another life but if it is for a purpose there is no karma attached to it right so <clears throat> oh. all right so healing your gut is going to be your focus right healing your gut is going to be your focus and when you do that you will see that you will develop something which is called gut intelligence andar se aayega aawaz andar se aayega it will come from inside mm -hmm. right and if you wish to stay um in touch with us um this is how you can reach out to us thank you so much um wait 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 keep that. this keep this keep this and keep this for i'll come back to this i've got somebody to okay. thank okay okay okay, okay. So i'd like to thank uh, my family for letting me do this right mm -hmm. um they it's it's their time that i you know really take out and i like to th <clears throat> thank them for being staying with me and really letting me do things that i'm really passionate about it's and every thing that i do is a dedication to them thank you very much lakshmi and ritu mm -hmm. and uh, this is how <clears throat> uh ofra so we can reach out to us so thank you once again everyone for um you know giving us a patient uh, hearing and sorry if i've been pushy in the chat box but i really love engagement can't help it <laughs> i want to thank you so much for being so interactive because i think it's very refreshing and it's nice and it's the, and the enthusiasm i think it's passing through and it's very valuable because this is how we heal through this connection absolutely of course thank you so much so th please keep this slide on and i have two questions from the audience and i see that more and more people have uh, joined us many uh, faces that i cannot see but i see the names and i appreciate it very much they've joined us so you were talking about uh, garlic and onion and that many people that does meditation avoid garlic and onion what would you suggest um see I, you really need to think in terms of um what effect it has on your body and your mind so uh, initially when i started off uh meditation or any activity that i used to do earlier i used to avoid onion and garlic <clears throat> but then i started experimenting with it right uh i started using it and really tried understanding what effect it has on me because i am different from the other person right there's a lot of um you know um information about onion and garlic being tamasic mm. right or some even have diverse opinions on this as well so uh in ayurveda garlic has been mentioned as amrit itself amrit that fell on earth right so if using them helps you stay healthier because even um gautama buddha he at one point starved himself and i un he understood that starving doesn't help in meditation he started eating and building his physique really well right similarly if it helps us whatever we eat look into yourself when you're doing the meditation you eat something you check out the next day how you feel about it so i'll just give you uh, one thing uh, to think about if you want to know whether your body or whether the food that you have taken suits you or not just check your flexibility the next day after taking it so right you have something in the evening and the next day morning you're doing say forward bends or whatever right you're exercising if you feel stiff check the previous day's meal meal what you have taken right it's a direct indication that something is not in place right so that will give you a lot of insights right Thank you. Um another question is what about uh gluten sensitivity and lactose sensitivity how would you relate relate to that? 
I love this question. Thank you yes. so much for asking. Now the reason is now um, let's say that you cut yourself. Mm. Okay, you cut yourself, mm. and you cut yourself, and um, you take some salt, mm. you rub over it. Mm. Okay, and you rub over it. It's going to burn for sure. Mm. Now tell me, why is it burning? Is the cause the salt or the wound? is it the salt or the wound if you rub salt over normal skin you're not, you're not going to feel anything but where there is a wound you will feel that similarly right when you have gluten intolerance it's not because of the wheat or the gluten in it that is causing it it is because your gut is unhealthy it needs healing it's got wounds that is the reason why you feel an intolerance to gluten or lactose now gluten um in every case this is true but in case of lactose it's a bit different mm. right so if you don't have the lactase enzyme which might be lacking in some then you might not be able to digest it right but that is like only say um indians are not or either i would say were not um gluten in, uh, sorry lactose intolerant right only it has come up casein and lactose intolerant it's very very new right so almost 95 percentage of lactose intolerance comes from an unhealthy gut and not from the absence of the lactase enzyme mm. right so um that's the question that we need to ask are is our gut healthy and not are we intolerant thank you we have few uh questions in chat box here. Sorry, I have a lot of interest in what you were talking about. I guess you already know her. And she's asking about the buttermilk. What is the ideal preparation for buttermilk? All right. Um, there are 10 different varieties of buttermilk that you can prepare, right? But I'll tell you something that's really practical and doable. Mm. What you do is if you have really thick curd, mm. right, you add uh, about four times water slowly not all of a sudden slowly and keep churning it and by the time you reach four times water you will see that the butter will come on top remove the butter churn it really well remove the butter and whatever is left is buttermilk what we do at home is that uh, this is something that i learned from my grandmother okay she was somebody who would walk with a bottle right um in the house, like uh, we, our house is like a 150 year old house, right? It's an old one, my uh, ancestral home. So we would see her walking through the entire house, which is about six, around five, five, six thousand square feet. So she would just keep, you know, shaking this and walking around. And what will happen is she's doing the same churning. So if anybody wants to churn buttermilk, take a little bit of curd in a bottle, add four times water and keep, you know, shaking it. After, after a while, you'll see that the butter will come on top and you can remove that butter and use the rest of the buttermilk, right? That is how you prepare it. That's one way. There are many different ways, right? That's mm -hmm. one way of preparing. There's one healthy way of preparing buttermilk. Ofra. Yeah, okay. When we are talking about Israel and the West, we of course have a different kind of milk there and uh, we will have other suggestions for foreigners how to do that, but then another session. There is another question of not eating raw at all, or is it okay? Or when we could have raw salads or fruit? Like, what is your recommendation about? Uh, not eating raw, uh, okay. So, <clears throat> when you are eating fruits, right? Um, just have fruits. When you're eating raw veggies, just have them right let's not mix them because the way the body would take fruits and the day the way the body would take veggies would be totally different there is uh, something which is called uh, it's it's much more deeper but the qualities of uh, food products are or food uh, produce is understood by um, its taste rasaguna virya and vipaka the, the the potency of it there are other factors that go into it so if they are opposite, your body will find it very difficult to manage it, right? So in that at that in that um, context, uh, if you take 
fruits and veggies separately it will be good one now it's not that you should not take any raw veggies but if you are predominantly of certain prakritis it will not digest well for you <clears throat> and especially uh, for a uh, for a vata if you are predominantly vata it's a big discussion right but i'm just opening a few doors for you so if you are vata predominantly you'll find it very difficult to digest raw veggies millets and stuff mm-hmm. like that right mm-hmm. so uh, it's not that you should not but identifying what you are and working accordingly because it's not going to help you right if not done right so raw salads are okay for some but not for all but definitely if your if your gut is unhealthy raw salads are a big no no right <clears throat> another question thank you so much but we have so many questions but we need to cut it because i promised you it's going to be short so you can ask questions in the vedicus community and uh, we will add uh, dr harish there and he will uh, betty harish there and he will answer there sorry sorry to ma'am and i'm very happy about the enthusiasm there is a question about what in what cases i would recommend to eat animal products okay. animal products means meat right well i i guess she she meant meat because animal products not yeah so um there is a concept in ayurveda which is uh, said vridhi samanehi sarvesham which means um when like comes into your body like grows for example uh when uh, this is something that happened to my father's aunt uh, she was in mumbai in the 70s which was a time when um um what was that um which was a disease i'm forgetting right uh, there was a disease that was rampant i'll come to it i'll i'll remember mm-hmm. so which actually put her in a state where her um tb yeah uh, tb where her lungs one of her lungs collapsed right <clears throat> now she lost a lot of um muscle and she was not able to survive right she was a vegetarian all her life but my uncle my father's uncle Uh, fed her meat and that to mutton right fed her mutton so that she would grow muscle right so that she would grow muscle and um egg whites and meat is what brought her back to life right she has never eaten that since even after that right so it really boils down to what is the reason why are we having it So yes it does recommend in certain cases. Right. And we of course uh know that we they didn't know that we grow them with antibiotic and stuff like this yes, and we try to get the pure that we can have like A2. So right? Right. Well last question is um lemon. Is it good for gut or is it acidic? How would you approach that? Ah uh, okay Manisha I saw that question that's mm-hmm. from Manisha Mhm uh, Manisha I've got a task for you right mm-hmm. what you do is really check yourself when you take lemon I'm not asking you to take it on a regular basis but when you do really see how your rest of the day or the rest of your day goes right if you feel because it's very very different for different people yeah you can uh say in terms of vata pitta and kapha yes but then i would uh, since you're here in this forum i'm sure that you are a seeker right and for a seeker an observation is very very important right observe yourself everything is good each and everything even poison is good there are times when we use poison in our treatment right so everything is good even for the gut right but that would really depend on how your gut responds to it there is nothing wrong in having lemon right it's good no doubt you feel good when you have a lemonade why right you feel good why because amla or the taste of <clears throat> that sourness is something that creates happiness or it really opens your heart right i still remember my daughter having it for the first time you know she 
and she gave us a very good smile right so that really uh, is how amla is or soreness is so sore sore is something that's really good for us but excessive usage of it really causes concern so in small dosages which you would um, you know um streamline or you would decide according to how your body responds is what you look at you know there is no society norm for it but it's what you feel you experience as you take it matra is decided by you and i would like to thank you so much and tell the uh, mr Sa- sahuji or ma'am or mr that when it comes to like advice on a very specific questions like this of course you have vishamagni and how should you take trifala trifala pacifies three dosha but we don't uh, we don't know your case so it's better to consult with dr harish according to the details that you have on the screen vidya harish will give you the best uh, answer because it's a vast knowledge to share and like a very limited time and we don't want to cause harm sorry for not answering your question but this is the answer to the question so thank you so much vedya harish warrior and thanks all of our teacher to you know to bring us to this session and let's hope that we have contributed to many thank you hope thank to you see so you much. here again thank you so much thank you for and thank you once again everyone for um, Joy. you know for the opportunity thank you so much bye take care